So I actually wasn't planning to do a video today, or if I was, it would have been a video that I got out early regarding a pretty big leak of an upcoming CPU. But I decided to push that back a bit after I saw AMD's quarter one earnings. And that's because I felt like it was time to really hone an argument that I've been making off and on on broken silicons and live streams over the past few months and do a specific video talking about what AMD should do this year with the rest of their RDNA 3 lineup. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, what I'm trying to do here is not push AMD to do the right thing. I'm trying to push them to do the smart thing. Let me explain. A lot of people seem to think that AMD was greedy with the 7900 XT when they launched it for $900. And while I certainly partially agree with those thoughts that greed had to have been a factor in overpricing that graphics card, I disagree on the other half of it because I actually think the majority of that decision was made out of stupidity, out of misreading the market. And that's because AMD quickly dropped the price to $850 on their own website, selling a graphics card that anchors the price from their own website, something NVIDIA doesn't do. And in fact, right now, you can often find the 7900 XT for below 800. It even got close to $760 briefly about a week ago. And in fact, I want to leak today that I am told some AIBs, not just XFX, by the way, but some are selling 7900 XTs for $750 to retailers before those retailers take their cut from a markup. And the AIBs, I'm also told, are happy about this. They're not complaining. Just one day, they told their retail partners that, hey, this model of the 7900 XT, you can now get it for $750 and sell it for whatever you want. So when you guys see sub $800 7900 XTs, they have a typical retailer and AIB markup, and AMD is still making good money on them. We know AMD is still making good money on these discounted cards that they dropped the price of quickly after misreading the market because, well, their earnings just came out and they don't lie. Overall, AMD's margins have remained around 50% this quarter, the same quarter that has devastated Intel. And look, I do understand that that chart there of 50% margins is for overall margins for AMD. It's not just for gaming. It's what it all averages out to for the company. Right, but that still means that we can say in a very down market that's devastating Intel, these bargain prices we're seeing on Radeon graphics cards, they're not meaningfully impacting their revenue to a point where it looks anything like Intel. So AMD is still doing fine with these graphics card prices they have right now. And in fact, if we look at their reporting for their gaming segment that includes both semi-custom or console and desktop graphics cards, we can see that, well, console sales, that semi-custom revenue, is up double digits. Remember, revenue is not margins. So they're selling more SOCs to Sony. And I don't think it would be crazy that they're making only like a 5 to 15% margin on their APUs that they sell for consoles. That's pretty much what I heard it was a while ago. So why would AMD do that though? Well, they do that because they will sell like 20 million APUs to Sony for the PlayStation 5 per year, and they're guaranteed to sell. It's not like desktop graphics cards that have all of this competition, and then sales go up, sales go down, inventory piles up. The consoles are still relatively new, aggressively priced relative to gaming PCs. AMD knows that if they only get 10 or 15% per APU sold to Sony, it's going to be tens of millions of APUs sold per year, and they're all going to sell. And so if you think about it, in the past year, console sales up, margins for this segment, gaming down from 19 to 18%. That's barely a change in margins, while the lower margin products are selling better. So I think we can just conclude that overall, we're not, we cannot be sure what the exact margin is on each Radeon graphics card sold, but we can say that after VRAM prices went down, after shipping costs went down, after the shortages ended, AMD probably just dropped prices on RDNA 2 stuff that was already probably cheaper for them to make anyway. And their overall margins are fine, even at the prices you see right now. Those sub-$800 7900 XTs, those bargain price 
$300 or less 6,710 gigabyte and sub $500 6,800 graphics cards you're seeing right now. AMD's making fine money on them. And because this is now proven in their earnings, I want to say a message into the camera directly to AMD. You dropped the price of the 7900 XT without batting an eye, so I know it wasn't all greed. Now, there was probably some greed there, but unlike most companies, you did drop the price quickly and you are willing to sell the 7900 XT for below MSRP from your own website. So AMD, I don't think you're crazy greedy here. I do think you just misread the market and misread how much people would be willing to spend for a 20 gigabyte graphics card that was really too close in price to the 7900 XTX in performance. But AMD, don't misread the market again. Large YouTubers like Hardware Unboxed have flat out publicly said that if you price the 7600 at $300 or above with 8 gigabytes, it's going to get a bad review. And I also asked my viewers on a live stream to chime in what they would pay for Navi 33 performance that I leaked, and they all said the same thing below 300. You have been warned, AMD. And if you pull something like a $320 to $350 7,608 gigabyte, like I know from talking to people, by the way, you're thinking of doing, it's going to get panned like the 7,900 XT did, and you're going to have to drop the price anyways. And, you know, I know you know that thing didn't sell as well as you wanted. To this day, in your earnings, you're avoiding talking about it, only mentioning the XTX because the XT sold below your expectations. And, well, look, I am confident there are a mountain of budget gamers still out there who haven't upgraded yet, clinging to their RX 470s, GTX 970s, and GTX 1060s. All of them have less than 8 gigabytes of RAM, and I'm sure they are begging for any reasonable 8 gigabyte, lower mid-range priced graphics card to emerge right now so they can finally upgrade to something that even remotely resembles the prices they paid years ago. And look, AMD, I know, I know you want to kill off budget graphics cards and replace them with APUs over the next few years. But so what? Make your last budget GPU truly budget so that it's a beautiful swan song of budget graphics cards. Because if you do, if you do do that, AMD, they will remember. And even if they don't go to an APU or they cling to that card for a long time, eventually those people cling to 470s and 970s that upgrade to a 7600 that's reasonably priced. They'll probably remember you did this and upgrade to an RX 970 XT in the future with a new generation. They'll remember you were good to them before and be more likely to upgrade to your future stuff later. However, there is some possibly good news here. It does seem like AMD may already be telegraphing that they are preparing to be smart with the rest of their RX 7000 series lineup. Well, it's either that or they're preemptively putting their foot in their mouth again like they did years ago when they bragged about the 5500 XT having 8 gigabytes and 4 gigabytes not being enough anymore. And I do want to talk about that and what lineup I am confident would take market share for AMD, but first an ad from a sponsor. Ever feel like a dog chasing its tail as you scour dozens of eBay postings and CD websites looking for a safe way to get reasonably priced Microsoft software? Well, you don't have to do that. Just go to cdkeyoffer.com. This piece of content is sponsored by cdkeyoffer.com that offers both Microsoft operating systems, office products, select games, and even some gaming hardware peripherals for reasonable prices. And you know, they've been a sponsor of Moore's Law's Dead and the entire team here for years for a reason. They've been good to me. They've been good to Dan. They've been good to dozens of me and Dan's family members and friends for years now. And they've also been good to the Moore's Law is Dead community. So whether you're looking for Steam, EA, Uplay, or PlayStation keys, or of course Microsoft products or gaming peripherals, support Moore's Law is Dead by using the offer code BROKENSILICON for 25% off all Microsoft products and Die Shrink for 3% off everything else on the website. Support Moore's Law is Dead by supporting one of our best long-term sponsors, cdkeyoffer.com today. 
All right, so the thing I want to get to now in this video is a tweet from AMD executive Sasa Marinkovich that bragged about AMD offering significantly more VRAM for the money compared to NVIDIA throughout its lineup. Now, either this person at AMD is setting up the company for immense criticism like they did when they bragged about the 5500 XT having 8 gigabytes before then launching the 6500 XT for a gigabyte, or Sasa knows something about the rest of the lineup that this person is telegraphing to get some marketing out for AMD before they launch the rest of the lineup. You see, I would suggest this tweet could mean that AMD plans to replace the 6950 XT and 6800 XT for a 7800 XT 16 gigabyte card that crushes the 4070 with more VRAM for a similar price. And then that they plan to replace the RX 6800 with 16 gigabytes with a 7700 XT with 16 gigabytes that should crush and humiliate an 8 gigabyte 4060 Ti that has a similar price point. And then after that, I would suggest they're planning some 16 gigabyte or 12 gigabyte 7700 that if it has the right price could sell well. And then maybe they will price the 8 gigabyte 7600 well, 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 well below these cards, hopefully close to half as much as them. And people then won't complain about how much RAM it has. And I actually do then want to get to why I am sure AMD can afford to sell a 7600 8 gigabyte for less than $300. And it's called the 6 nanometer 6500 XT. AMD launched that 4 gigabyte graphics card for $200 during VRAM shortages, where I was told each gigabyte was 10 to $20. And then, just like I said what happened back then, once the shortages end, it would quickly drop to, well, it did. It dropped to $170. And we know from AMD's earnings that AMD is still doing pretty dang good right now overall. And so, if they could sell a 100 millimeter squared, 4 gigabyte, 6 nanometer card for 170 Adding more silicon to a 200 millimeter square die, it's like another $15. And adding four gigabytes more of RAM is like another $25. Everything accounted for with the same margins as that 6500 XT that everyone called greedy and a cash grab. AMD could still launch an eight gigabyte 7600 for probably 250 or higher with excellent margins, which by the way, more proof, the 6700 right now with 10 gigabytes of RAM and a much larger die size than the 7600, which remember, even if it's cut down, that does not change the price of that die. It costs the same to AMD. That's selling for $300, meaning no new 8 gigabyte card should be $300 if tons of vendors are selling a 10 gigabyte card for around that price. And so it's not just opinion, by the way. It doesn't matter what it costs. Right now, people can get a card that will perform similar to the 7600 with 10 gigabytes of RAM for $300. So whether it costs the right amount or not, it doesn't matter. People have another option. The 7600 has to cost less than 300 or it will be dead on arrival. And so I want to now close out this video, not with a leak. This part here is not leaking what I think AMD will do. It is leaking my opinion on what I think will or will not be successful in taking market share this year for AMD. And remember, I'm not going to show any prices on screen that I'm not 100% sure have good fat margins behind them that AMD can afford to do. So the first one I want to show is the bad one. This is the lineup I think AMD would stick with if they want to not gain any market share to NVIDIA and have just as much oversupply pile up in warehouses just like Lovelace is right now. They'd keep the 7900 XTX always at 1000 They'd keep the 7900 XT at 850 like it is. And they would drop the 7800 XT, or they'd probably call it the XTX to pretend it's more premium, at $700 and again drop the XTX 7700 for 550 the 7700 XT with just 12 gigabytes for 450 and the 7608 gigabyte for $330. At those prices, I am sure these products will be panned. It won't sell and you'll have to lower prices eventually anyways, but you won't take market share AMD because the damage will already be done. People will have called you greedy. Okay. Now, here's the lineup I think AMD on the ultimate extreme could do, and I am sure this would take market share. 
Now, the 7900 XTX continues to sell. I think eventually maybe they should drop it to 900, but if they keep it at 1,000, as long as it keeps selling, that's just common sense. But then below that, it's obvious that the 7900 XT sells gangbusters at 750, and I know right now they can afford to sell it to retailers for 750. I'm guessing they can afford to, afford to sell it to them for 700 as well, and then so and so on and so forth down the lineup. The 7800 XT 16 gigabyte, Six hundred dollars. The seventy-seven hundred XT, sixteen gigabyte, five hundred. Still giving sixteen gigabytes to the cut down Navi thirty-two card, four hundred and thirty, and then three hundred and thirty dollars for an eventually launched sixteen gigabyte seventy-six hundred. Something that I'm sure so many gamers would be happy to buy. Something that games like a mid-range card from last gen for less less money than last gen for more VRAM than last gen. In a year where tons of games are using more than 12 gigabytes of RAM, I am sure a lot of people would spring for that option. And then, of course, though, a $280.7600. Again, at $280, that 7600 has four more gigabytes and only 100 millimeter squared more 6 nanometer silicon than the 6500 XT that launched for 200 that everyone said was greedy. So if anything, AMD is still being greedy, launching the 7,608 gigabyte for $280. And the same is true for the rest of that line upon screen. A $600 7,800 XT 16 gigabyte, if it was based on a crazy cut down variant of Navi 31, like a gaming W7800, that graphics card would still be charging $20 more than what they charged for the 6,800 last gen. And we know their margins are good. And the 7,700 XT with 16 gigabytes, if that was even full Navi 32, I know that Navi 32 doesn't cost that much more to make than Navi 22. They'd be charging $20 more than the 6700 XT that made huge margins in times of shortages when VRAM costs more. AMD can afford that lineup I'm showing there. And so, AMD, the ball is in your court. You can take market share while making more money, or you can blow it again. And consider this, AMD. Remember that if you did this, if you were selling sub like $450 16 gigabyte cards and offered like a $350 16 gigabyte variant of Navi 33, NVIDIA would be forced to launch 16 gigabyte versions of the 4060 Ti and maybe even the 4060, which would mean we would have two generations in a row where NVIDIA's 60 series has more VRAM than their 70 series because they fucked up the initial launch. And couldn't we all use a good laugh this year? But anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Don't miss the Daniel Nenny episode of Broken Silicon that just came out. He gives great insights into why Blackwell might be delayed for non-TSMC 3 nanometer yield issues. It might be about something else I've been talking about a lot for a year now. And we also talk about NVIDIA eventually going into chiplet designs and tons of other things as well. If you subscribe to the Moore's Law's Dead Patreon, in fact, you can get that episode early and ad free and future Broken Silicon episodes early and ad free and ask guest questions. You can also get exclusive videos only Patreons get access to as well. We cannot do this without our patrons. So if you have the extra two or four dollars or more money per month to give us, there's tons of content there for you that keeps this channel afloat. But for everybody else, no matter what, thank you for watching.